Well, good morning, everybody. It's 11.15 a.m. on um, August the 7th, 2024. It's a Wednesday. And uh, I'm headed in. Dottie and I. Hey, Dottie. Dottie and I are headed into Angel Fire to do some laundry. Now. I want to talk about laundry and angel fire because I'm going to talk about a positive way to do to deal with negative reviews. So, when looking for a place to do laundry in this area, I was told, "Hey, you have two choices: you can go to Cimarron or you can go to Angel Fire." Uh, Cimarron's great. It's um, nothing but good things. They said, Angel Fire? You know, I heard a couple, I heard some rumors. And the rumors were it's expensive, there are a lot of broken machines, and the dryers don't dry very well. And also I heard that you lo can lose your money in the machine and there's no way to get the money back once you lose your money in the machine. And I went and to Google and I looked at reviews and there were people that said all of those things um, pretty much so I'm gonna go there why am I gonna go there because I want to do a little experiment and here's the experiment let's talk about the things that they have negative things to say about this laundromat and we have with their broken machines um, machines that don't work I say so what it's if you go into a, a, a laundry place a laundromat and there are 10 machines and five are broken what you've done is you walk into a laundromat that has five machines what's wrong with that there's actually nothing wrong with that. Um, there are laundromats where all the machines are working and 100% working is five machines. So what's the difference between that and a laundromat that has 10 machines and half are broken? Nothing. So we're going to expect that not all the machines are going to be working. Okay? There's not. I don't have a problem with that. Number two. The dryers don't dry. Well, well, not that they don't dry, they don't dry well. I guess you gotta put more quarters in then, don't you? And I will say this, all the good things I heard about the one in Cimarron, um, I put my load in that dryer and put, you know, the, the dollar and a quarter or dollar fifty or whatever it was, and my stuff really wasn't quite dry. So I'm going to expect that my stuff won't be dry after one round. And then I'll put in more money and we'll do two rounds and I better to be dry. I'm expecting that. Um, it's more expensive. Well, guess what? Angel Fire is closer, it's more convenient, and it's got way more tourists. It is more, everything in Angel Fire is more expensive than Cimarron. Everything. So I expect to pay more money. I have a choice. I can go to Cimarron and pay less money or I can pay more money in Angel Fire. And the last thing is, you know, what if I put my money in a machine and it doesn't work and there's no way to get the money back? Well, that would be a disappointment. But I, this one's an exception. I'm gonna make the expectation that if I really want my money back, I will bet there's a way to do it. Um, I trust that eventually the people that run a laundromat will make good when their machine takes money and doesn't do anything for it. If not, that's the one thing out of everything I really, I can't make an adjustment in my head for it if it happens. But everything else, what have I done? I have um, researched 
and I have adjusted my expectations. What do you think of that? I adjusted my expectations. And um, I've learned something that um, the source of much frustration, resentment, anger is when we have expectations that go unfulfilled. So what's a solution to that? A solution to that is when you can, make an adjustment to your expectations. So I'm on my way to Angel Fire. I'm going to I'm expecting I'm going to pay more money than I did at the other, the last place I went to. It's going to be more expensive. I'm going to expect it's going to take me feeding the dryer more than once to get my clothes dry. Um, and I'm going to expect quite a few of the machines to have little signs on them saying they're not available for use. And I'm going in with the expectation that I think is reasonable that if I lose some money, if I really want that money back, there'll be a way to do it. So with those expectations, we'll see how I do here. What do you think, Dottie? <laughs> so there, there, there's on full-time RVers, I think there's, there's a, maybe a 50-50 split with our people saying, I hate doing laundry on the road. And the other half say, either I don't mind or I like doing laundry on, on the road. And I'm, I'm in the, I like doing it. Um, you go into a, a new laundromat somewhere. Um, it's a good place to meet locals. It's a good day, place to meet people, period. It's interesting. I like it. It's fun kind of lucky that I feel that way. The thought of having a big old rig with my own washer and dryer appeals to me not at all. It's This has given me something to do on a day. I don't have anything else planned. It's a beautiful day for a drive. It's content for my channel. Even though it's a video about doing laundry really about video a video about expectations and how managing your expectations can have a direct effect on your mood and the more I can keep my mood where it is right now I'm full of joy and contentment the better my life is so not really about laundry, it's about laundry as a catalyst to demonstrate how we can adjust our expectations in life to make our life more joyful. Um, and it really comes down often to are the expectations I have for a business or a person or an event, are they reasonable? Are they reasonable expectations? These days, if I am going to book a flight, is it reasonable to expect that on my trip on the airplane that everything is going to go according to plan? I'm not sure that's a reasonable expectation. If I have the expectation is things can go wrong on this trip, lines can be long, weather can change, crazy stuff can happen. So if I have a reasonable expectation, I'll probably show up a couple hours early for my flight. So I don't get caught in a situation where I miss my flight or things get real tense about making my flight. And let's stack another expectation onto there. Well, if I leave, if I get there two hours early, chances are pretty good I'm going to be sitting around wait, waiting because, you know, there's a good chance things will go smoothly and I'll get through security and TSA and everything 
and I'll be I'll have an hour to w or more to wait before I board my flight. Well, if I'm expecting that and I prepare for it, I won't be upset when it happens. If I go two hours early and things are a mess and it takes everything's taken longer than possible than you ever thought possible, but I make it onto my flight with 10 or 15 minutes to, to spare because I was there two hours early, I feel pretty good about that too. There's a, a saying I heard many years ago that um, made a lot of sense to me and it echoes through my mind routinely and that is expectations are resentments under construction. Think about it. You can't have a resentment that is not preceded by an expectation. And if you're pretty vigilant about having reasonable expectations, you're going to have a whole lot less resentment in your life. That's how it's worked for me. Pets, pals, dog and cat, boarding kennel. I just saw a sign that pointed down that dirt road. Do you want to go stay in the boarding kennel, Dottie? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think she wants to. That's what I'm going to guess. So, why don't I... Why, let's do this. Why don't I turn this around and get so you can... Uh, Maybe see the see the road here. I know so many of you really like seeing the road as I'm driving. And we're getting pretty close to. Oh, well, I was saying we're going to get we're pretty close to Angel Fire, but we're just pets in these sand pits or whatever they are here. And I think it's probably another five miles or so. There's a bicyclist. Well, you got to be brave to ride a bicycle on any uh, roadway that has a lot of high-speed traffic like this one. Because, you know, you could do all the things that you're supposed to do to protect yourself. But what you can't protect yourself from is a totally distracted driver. No protection. You know, you look at a day like this and the sky's blue and there's just hints of clouds around on the horizons. And you think this is, it won't it won't rain today. But how much you want to bet it does? How much you bet we have a good thunderstorm round about three or four in the afternoon. I think there's a mini storage place there that are got they're storing lots of travel trailers. And we are we weren't five miles from Angel Fire. I don't know what I was talking about. Because right here on the right is the Vietnam Memorial. Which I, I got to get up to because I found out. I was there last year and did a video. But they have done a miniature version of the Memorial Wall that I need to go see in film. I need to do that. But maybe not today. be taking Dottie into the laundromat so Dottie stays in the car it's like it's August you leave your dog in the car well I have two sets of keys I leave the engine and the AC running and I only do it um, for very short periods of time but I'll never leave Dottie in a car in the 
heat without that. And here we are with our left turn into Angel Fire. Little towns next to each other, Eagle Nest and Angel Fire, 10 miles apart. And at least today I didn't get mixed up and say um, Angel Nest and Eagle Fire. Airstream Park there. Real old. Maybe 60s. It didn't take long to get here, did it? They have a good size uh, little airport. When I say good size, like you can see the runway, and it's a nice, wide, long runway that certainly small jets could could utilize. I would think. Imagining is maybe wealthy people flying in here on the regular in the winter to go to the ski resort. That's how what I imagine, and what I imagine could be very different from reality, right, Dottie? The Verity RV Park. It's a nice small, looks like a small, quaint little RV park there. I bet it's not cheap though. There's not much that's inexpensive in Angel Fire. fairly close to where the laundry is. Morning Star, I think it's right next to Morning Star, so I think it's right here. Is it here? No, no, there's a, that's a bakery. Sam's. I might have passed it. I'm thinking I might have passed the laundromat. But that's okay. That's fine. You can turn around. Right, Dottie? I thought I had a real good beat on where it was because we had um, breakfast at a place, Morning Star, and I think I saw the, the sign for it way back there. And 
And I would say for sure we need to turn around. I would say almost for certain let's go up a little further just to make sure I'm not completely out of my mind. No, this is Angel Fire Pizza. This is, uh, oh, laundry. It's right here. <laughs> I will be damned. It is right here. And that says private drive. And there's the Morning Star restaurant right next door. I remember that part correctly. I wonder if I can park over here. That guy's parked. I bet I can. I bet I can park right here. We'll see. We'll see. All right. I will be back. All right. Well, the first thing I just found out is that the warning about the dryers, at least right now, is unfounded. I just talked to a lady that had several loads and several dryers, and she said, the dryers are just fine. Also about cost, I'm about to put a load in and it's $2.75. That is not expensive for a laundromat. Not expensive at all. So. So far, and I see so far maybe one or two machines that are out of order. So that's evidently not a thing either. Just gonna fire this up and I'll be right back. So I'm putting my 275 in, it's gonna take 27 minutes, it's working just fine. Let's take a, just a little tour around. Hang on. And I said I there were a couple of machines out of order. This this big one here is one of the top loaders. So there's a third one. The rest look totally okay, so that's only three. So we're busting some myths here about this business. Um, only three machines out of order. Okay, there's a fourth one. One of the big dryers is that. But that's not bad. It is not bad at all. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's a beautiful location, isn't it? I did find a better place to park my vehicle here. The designated place, a designated spot. Going to grab our phone. 
That is good. It's nice and cool in here. If you want proof. Proof of comfort. There's Dottie. Are you comfortable, Dottie? <laughs> She's fine. All right. Got the AC going just fine. Lock her up. And we got 25 minutes of wash time. And we'll kind of sit in here and relax for a minute. All right, well, the washer finished. And um, I'm not going to call this a complaint, an observation, that I synced up my timer on my iPhone to coincide with when this would be done. And uh, it, it still had six minutes on it when I came back. So just if you're here, know that the timer isn't exactly accurate and it'll take a little bit longer than it says not a big deal Gonna be two fifty. All right. Um, what did I say? Two fifty for forty five minutes. And uh, we'll see how that does. We'll set the phone for forty five. We'll see how accurate that time is. And if it dries the clothes, which I suspect it's going. <clears throat> so there's five or six minutes left, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway, because I bought ice cream at the grocery store. I can tell you, just put my hand in there, it's 100%, it's 100 dry. And five or six minutes early. <clears throat> and as far as getting money back, if you needed it, there's an attendant here. <laughs> so, um, let's just talk about this experience for a minute. Um, I listened to the rumors, I read the Google reviews, and you know what? All of those things could have been true at one time. What I can tell you for certain is none of those things were true today. <clears throat> so this laundromat, um, <laughs> I opened the wrong door to put the laundry in. This is an Aspen Gold laundromat in uh, Angel Fire is great. I, you know, um, virtually all of the things that I heard um, weren't true. So I had I had lowered expectations, right? and my experience exceeded those expectations. Isn't that cool? Um, that is pretty amazing, I think. So um, I did, uh, <laughs> the 45 minute timer still is not up, I don't think. Um, I was five or six minutes early at 40 minutes or 
39 minutes or whatever it was, it was um, plenty, plenty. <coughs> Pardon me. And Dottie was just fine. There she is. There's the Dottie dog. Are you sure we have Dottie dog in there? We do. We're headed home and we normally have to wait in the whole 45 minutes just to do technically exactly what the place was telling me to do. But I, I uh, as soon as I transferred everything to the dryer, I ran to the grocery store and I bought some chocolate ice cream. I wrapped it up real good and uh, I just don't want it to melt. So I left a little bit early and it was just fine. I mean, the clothes were piping hot um, and you probably saw me take everything out and stuff it in the bag and we're just going now. You said, don't you fold your clothes? I said, sure I do at home. <laughs> Sometimes I do, um, if there's like a lot of room and a big table on the laundromat, I'll do my folding there. But if I'm close, um, this laundry's still gonna be warm when I get there. And I wear cheap t-shirts, um, jeans, <laughs> uh, underwear, socks, and that's, that's it, guys. <laughs> Nothing that really needs to be carefully folded. Um, so it is 1.08 p.m. and <clears throat> uh, it didn't take long at all. So I drove to Angel Fire, I uh, got my laundry done, and my memory's not that great about the prices. What, I think they were both, weren't they both 275 So, um, less than $6. And I put a lot of laundry, if you saw when I was unloading the dryer, I put a lot of laundry in that washer and dryer, and it did just fine. Just fine. There were a couple of people in here. They had like five washers going and four dryers. And it's like, they got a lot of clothes. <laughs> and they must not go very often. Uh, but uh, I told you it's a great place to meet people. Um, I don't know if you noticed when we pull in, there was a Lazy Days Class C. And I met a nice couple that are full timers and they had they had that class C and it was kind of pulled out almost to the middle of the parking lot and they they mentioned they brought that up and they said you know we're parked like that cuz we're trying to keep our refrigerator level which is those of you that are RVers know that if you have a propane fr fridge you need to keep it level and not that Parking it on something that's not level will ruin it right away. But if you do it too much over time, it'll degrade it and you'll have problems. And so I was talking about the, the real significant movement towards people getting rid of propane fridges and getting um, electric fridges, both 12 volt and um, 120 volt fridges, which is eventually that's what I'm gonna do. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna wait until my uh, propane one fails I doubt it I doubt it I think you can uh, if you play it right and you've got a, a good functioning um, propane electric combo fridge uh, that isn't too many years old I think you can get a good chunk of change for it probably more for it than the electric is going to cost um, and the only trick is if you like to boondock like I do and for those of you that don't know what that is, that's um, camping without electrical hookups, using solar and lithium batteries to power everything. If you have enough, you can power the refrigerator, and especially a 12 volt refrigerator takes very little power, um, but you have to have enough for it. And uh, it's free. What do I mean it's free? What's free? The refrigerator? No, of course the refrigerator is not free. But if you are powering your refrigerator with propane, a 20 gallon tank is going to cost you, um, right here in Eagle Nest, about 20 bucks. Um, 
and if you're powering your fridge with electricity that you're harvesting from the sun with um, uh, solar panels and a charge controller and a couple lithium batteries, then there is no cost to the energy portion. Now, of course, there's a cost to um, buying, designing, buying, installing a solar system and keeping up on the maintenance. And, but it's uh, over time, the cost of running a refrigerator would be a small fraction of what it would cost running for propane. So uh, I will be doing that someday. Now, if I wasn't, I'm a little tired. I, otherwise, I'd pull into the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and shoot the video on the mini wall. I, you know, of course, seen um, the original wall in Washington, D.C. more than once. It's very moving. If you don't know what it is, it's a um, polished marble wall that goes on for a long time because they list every casualty of the war on there by name. It's very moving. So this is a miniature version of that, a replica with all the names. Um, what you just saw, I think, on the right were apartments there that they're called Angel Nest Apartments. And, uh, I can't think of any apartment buildings with a more beautiful view than what you're looking at right now. And I was curious and uh, about them, about what they would cost. And, um, I was guessing $1,100 for a one bedroom and I contacted them and I was, a, I was like $5 off. Um, they contacted me and uh, said, uh, gave me the prices, but said, I'm sorry, there's nothing available. And then a week later, they sent me an email saying, we have a one bedroom available if you're still interested. You can move in in August. You know. In, in my world, $1,100 is, oh my God, that, that's a lot of money. When you're paying, um, you know, less than $500 for a full hookup campsite, $1,000, $1,100 plus utilities is like double, a little more than double. Um, but if you're a person that lives in a normal place, like an apartment or a home, $1,100 for a nice apartment with a good view seems like a, the deal of the century. It really does. So, um, it's all relative. So, I'm going to sign off here. I'm not going to make you ride all the way back with me. Um, I'm going to, uh, I am going to turn the camera around and do, show you a little bit of the drive coming up to Eagle Nest, but not too much. I think we don't want to overkill it. But I wanted to thank you for um, watching my channel, and I hope you're enjoying it. And let's turn the camera around and see what we can see here. And there it is. If you look real hard, you can see the beginning of Eagle Nest Lake on the right there. behind it and you can look if you can see off to the right you probably can't really see it but you see those dark clouds on the right part of your screen there that's going to be the afternoon shower thunderstorm coming in and uh, I guarantee that somewhere around two or three o'clock it's 1 now between two and four o'clock we'll get we'll get some rain and some thunder boomers 